guys, I'm Shlomin G, and welcome to another Minecraft Mayhem update video. Oh yeah, it's May, which means it's Mayhem's birthday again? Man, this event's getting old. Well, because it's May, I'm kind of like really busy right now because of studies and whatnot. So we're not going to change that much. So if I pull out all the changes that we have for this Mayhem, we've got... Oh, there's a lot. There's a lot. Well then, let's start here. These are lovely birthday decorations, aren't there? After feedback from last time, there have been some Rapid Racers map changes. You can see here that this section is completely different to what it was before. The fans are gone, these skips look a lot more forgiving, and it's a lot easier to understand as a section entirely. The water section in general has become a lot more forgiving. You can tell that there's not glass everywhere, and it's a lot easier to swim through without knocking into everything in your path. The block movement section also gets some changes that makes it a lot easier to navigate around. There are some pillars in between all the islands, and they reach down to the floor. Lastly, in in general, to make it a lot more obvious, the trident section, uh, at least you can see where you're going. Do you think it's obvious enough yet? What's this? New Mayhem game I see. Or returning, if you're an OG Mayhemer. Welcome to multi Spleef, a three-layered, three-round Spleef game mode where the Spleef type changes every 20 seconds. This game is very fast-paced and is designed to be very chaotic. To balance out higher layers, the lower you get, the smaller the arena will be. And so that means that by the end of the game, we should only have the bottom layer. It starts out massive, so don't worry. The different spleef types that the game can choose from is Ice Spleef, Regular Spleef, which is Spleef with Snowballs, Bow Spleef, Spleg, and TNT Run. Each type is deliberately very simple to understand. It just adds to the chaos of the game that they change every 20 seconds. Points are given based off of kills, survival, placement bonuses, and winning rounds. I'm excited to see this in the event. Good luck! And yes, if you didn't notice, this does replace Bridge Bonanza. Not to worry though, Bridge Bonanza is now Baguette Bonanza in the lobby. What does this guy do? Combat Cube now gives you the ability to see the kits in the kit selection area when you click on the NPCs. And speaking of kits, all of them, yes, I mean all of them, have been redone to be a lot more balanced. And speaking of balancing, points in this game and every game have been redone for, you guessed it, balancing. Something that I really wanted to do this mayhem was make the game a lot faster, as this game felt very slow paced at times. One of these times has been the end game, so this mid platform is a lot different. The trees are all gone, so it's a lot less campy. The vertical border also moves slightly faster. But what's most significant about Combat Cube this time around is that there's now a deathmatch. A while into the game, you'll notice a big message that announces a deathmatch occurring. The deathmatch brings a border that forces everyone in very quickly. So remember to stay on your toes. I've already said that all points have been redone, but this is significant enough for me to say that all bingo points are now based on placement. Elytra Race sees the new map, the Flying Depths. This map is a lot more open. This map allows you to fly down at a less exaggerated gradient, as the last map was very downwards based and included a lot of very steep falls. You'll enjoy the view. I know you will. Something to mention about this map in particular is that you get speed boosts. You get a regular speed boost that regenerates and you get a separate speed boost that's only given to you when you die or when you finish a lap. This is to make dying a lot less punishing as obviously it would kill all of your momentum. Good luck! In Guardians of the Chamber you'll notice some kit and map changes. Such as overall, the trident's being nerfed, healing being based off of natural regeneration, not eating anymore, and the sniper's crossbow only having 7 arrows instead of 25. Information about the kits will be in the Game Informations channel, and obviously in the kit GUI in the event. You'll notice that high ground has been nerfed a lot, and there are some new ways to get up, such as the water elevators at people's spawns. The lava pit also has a lot more platforms, which means it's a lot more forgiving. Lastly, you'll notice that winning a round is no longer dependent on if you can break the other team's guardian box. Instead, you can now win and get the same amount of points if you kill all the alive players. 
Though you'll be able to tell it's still mandatory to place your guardian box and it is still very much an option to just break it rather than kill the other players if you're not really that kind of a team. Good luck! Oh my god. Sky Skirmish finally gets a particle border. And as it's Mayhem's birthday, we'll treat it with a new map. Welcome to Bake and Brawl. We hope you enjoy the fact that there's now a particle border. Just remember not to have your particles on decrease, as it's not like other borders that I've seen where it would only reduce the particle amount by a bit. If you full on just have your particles on decrease rather than all, you won't see the border. In my opinion, this map makes playstyles very fun and cool. I hope you enjoy! Look at the Ark birthday cake! Look at it! It's so good looking! Um, oh, oh, um. See, see you in tomorrow's event. Happy birthday, Mayhem. Yeah.